Welcome to Your Career Story Podcast, a show that's designed for rock star professionals looking for that extra booster shot of confidence in their careers. Whether you're trying to get clarity on a job transition, want some work-life balance inspiration, or need a strategy to snag that promotion or raise, this podcast is for you. I'm your host, Jenna Viviano, ex-Wall Streeter turned startup junkie who now coaches hundreds of clients, empowering them to take back control of the job search and land their dream job. So sit back, grab a glass of wine, and prepare yourself for your weekly boost of career confidence. And welcome to another episode of the Your Career Story podcast. My name is Jenna Viviano, and we are here in, with season two talking all about work life balance. And I have one of my friends and past clients, Jennifer Fink, here today to talk to us about how to balance parenthood while being a rock star professional. So, Jennifer, thank you so much for coming today. Thanks for having me. This is going to be fun. Yeah. So, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do for work. Sure. I'm a mother of two with a son age 12 and a daughter age 14. I live in Dallas, but originally from New York, and I've been married 18 years. I'm a vice president of sales in the fashion accessory space, working in wholesale sales in the U.S. and Latin America. And over the 18 years of my career, I've worked in sales, merchandising, brand management, and international sales development. So you really have had a lot of things going on in the past couple of years. <laughs> Yeah. No, no small amount of things that you've been doing, right? Yes. And it goes really, really fast. And you're shocked to, to how quickly it goes and, and you look yeah. back on it. But um, it's it's great career-wise and, and family as well. Yeah. Which is why I really wanted to talk to you. It was funny when we had met and we'd had a couple conversations over the phone, learned a little bit more about you, obviously as a whole person, because it's part of coaching, right? And we were talking about your career, but also about your family life. So, and I think just in the spirit of work-life balance, we're having a lot of conversations with people around, you know, gut health, even brain health. We're talking about how to manage your mornings. We're talking about how do you build relationships when you're single or married. And so for here, like, how do you balance parenthood? So, you know, let's just start with a question that I've been asking every single person on this season is what does work life balance mean to you or mean for you? Sure. Well, I knew from the very beginning that I was going to be a working mom and that Mm -hmm. I wanted to pursue a career and that um, I wanted to continue to push my career forward, have um, new experiences and and development. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted my children to know that it was important for me to work um, and have two working parents and how that maybe looked different from other families. Sure. And I also, as you said, needed to think about my own, you know, mental health, my partner's mental health, and for sure sure my kids' mental health through it all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the biggest lesson is how do you manage that stress? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes, like Sheryl Sandberg says, um, when you're ready to lean in and when you're ready to lean out. And seasons. What? Yeah, exactly. Seasons for each different stage. For sure. sure. You had said, so balance obviously is like the key to that being present at home and then being present at work when you're there as well. What you had mentioned something just now that was kind of interesting. So you had always known that you wanted to be a working mom or was that kind of a decision you came to as you started working or or what's what kind of was the thought process around that? You know, I, I think I always knew I wanted to be a working mom. You definitely come back from maternity leave and say, can I really do this? Sure. And my word of advice there is give yourself even a couple months, the yeah. first, even the first six or eight weeks back at work, you're super distracted. Yeah. Um, and which I makes think, sense. Oh, you birthed a human, so <laughs> give yourself some great. A lot of people come back and they feel oh, so overwhelmed in the first yeah. couple weeks. You're yeah. changing, your baby's changing, and you sometimes mm-hmm. go home and you're like, I didn't know what to expect from the baby that night. Mm-hmm. But I just always said, you know, let me push through for a few months and really see how I feel. You definitely at times are going to say to yourself, can I do this? Or do I really want to do this? Or am I sacrificing, you know, what I want to do for my children? Mm -hmm. But you have to give yourself some time and and maybe not make that really quick decision of, I just can't do this. I just can't take it. Because I think you'll find yourself, especially as the baby gets older after three months, they're developing and, and you'll realize it's it's not as hard when they're so little and they, they need you at that stage. Yeah. And they're changing. 
Yeah. And they're so regimented. I have a couple of friends who had just um, given birth and and knowing that regimented schedule. And you're right, as they've got, it's been fun to actually watch them as they've gotten older. And one of my friends is like, yeah, actually, I'm going to go back to work. This is, this is, this is manageable. This, I can do this. We're a team, her and her husband. And so, yeah, she, she kind of had probably a similar sentiment where at first she was like, no way. And then she, as she like went on, she was like, okay, I can do this. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. So let's talk about family life. So you're you're a mom, right? Of how many? How old are your kids? Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, my son is 12 and I have a daughter okay. age 14. Okay. And it's so amazing to watch them learn and grow as you were saying infants and schedules, but yeah. as they, you know, start kindergarten, school age brings a whole nother um, change in their development. And then certainly as they go through middle school and then into yeah. high school, but every stage is, is absolutely beautiful and amazing. Yeah. So whenever they were younger, we, you and I had had a conversation about this, um, having conversations with your kids when they're younger about why you work, right? You said that you had had kind of those conversations with the kids. Why would, why did you do that? And why did you feel it was important? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talked, you know, just before about you, you have certain guilts, of course, and, and you'll mm-hmm. question at different times, is this the right thing? Sure. Um, you know, should I be working? Am I giving them everything they need? And when they're little, they really, they recognize that you may not be the parent in the classroom, um, sure. visiting the classroom and volunteering. So it was really important for me to take the time to be a, to be present in school when I could so mm-hmm. that they, I did see how they were growing at school and interacting with their teachers and friends. Right. Um, but then also explain to them what, a, what the career, my career is and um, what it meant for me. So yeah, they, they naturally recognize that your yes. family may be different from another family and you just use those times to, to give them, you know, a a life lesson and explain to them. Yeah. I bet that's been fun too, to share with them what you do. Absolutely. I mean, even sometimes just visiting um, my office or my husband's office is super fun, or I traveled to New York for work and they would go back home and see family and, and they would see what it was like to, you know, travel for work as well. And I traveled internationally pretty extensively throughout my career. So mm-hmm. they were enamored by the idea of where am I going? What am I doing? Yeah. And what am I seeing? So it also, you know, we talked a lot about um, international cultures and, and things like sure. that. So it was That's always really cool to share those experiences. Yeah, that's really cool. So you just mentioned your husband. So um, I think a lot of times we talk about how do you balance parenthood, how do you ba- balance motherhood, but also at the same time, you know, your your partner, your spouse. So talk to us a little bit about you both were working, correct, throughout the entirety of your kids growing up and whatnot. Absolutely. Always okay. worked, both of us. Um, always. And you both traveled a lot too, right? Yeah, we both okay. traveled. Um almost 50% of the time. So we were like two ships passing in the night very often. (laughs) Yeah. How did you manage that? What like pieces of advice do you give to people? Because I know that we have a lot of folks that I was actually just talking to another client about this, where she said, there's just not a lot of risk. There's a lot of resources out there for when you potentially have kids, right? About how do you balance it as a working mom? But she feels like even like in the sphere of just married couples, just in general, how do you, how do you, how do you do that relationship really well when you both have very high powered and intense careers? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. There's times where you're just, you know, the priority is the kids first. Sure. Um, and then you, you recognize that there's no time for yourself or, you know, for the two of you together. And sometimes you just have to accept that, you know, you will get, you guys will get back together as a couple when you have that moment. Um, Mm -hmm. but I think it's that under written rule that, you know, you're supportive of each other. And as you were talking about, you know, how much we both traveled, Mm -hmm. I'm very type A, so extremely organized. We just Mm -hmm. make sure we know where everyone is at any given point. Um, that just helps reduce some of the stress and you just have to let that parent be the parent when they're present in the house. And when you're remote, um, you can't, you can't parent remotely. So you just trust in each other. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think, you know, obviously as the years go by, you understand, um, and you're on the same page with the kids. And that's really important is that the kids kind of get the same message from both of you. But, um, and the other thing that you said when, when you're talking with your, your friend, 
there really is no manual. And I had to keep reminding myself of that because yeah, at good. times you feel you, you, you're you not doing it right. You didn't yeah. think it through. There is no manual for kids for life some days. And you just have to keep reminding yourself you're going to make mistakes. Even sometimes when the kids ask you, you know, for sure you have all the answers. We don't. Yeah. But we, we just have to keep moving and, and I think just remind ourselves that it's okay to not have every answer. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so true. Even just in general, I'm just even thinking for my own life, I don't have any children, but just thinking about how every day there's some new challenge that you constantly feel like, am I doing this right? Everyone else seems to be doing this really well. Why am I not doing this right? Oh, <laughs> um, so, so do you ever feel that way when like looking around at other moms and how do you like combat that feeling of not enoughness? I guess. Oh, or do you yeah. not feel that? Yeah, for sure. And and especially mom guilt. Yeah, especially if you're a working mom and, and maybe a lot of yeah. your friends aren't working. Um, sure. I would say just the opposite what you said, Jenna. I would be like, stop looking around. Yeah. You can't compare yourself to every other family or mm-hmm. even at work or you know what someone else is achieving that maybe you want to get there and you know mm-hmm. I can't push myself right now to get that next promotion I'm I'm going to just do the best job I can mm-hmm. so really try not to compare but but maybe just use those as milestones or things you want to emulate or learn but you sure. you can't compare you'll beat yourself up and and that's the other thing is don't beat yourself up and um just some days you take a day at a time and just go with it and other day other times you know you know when you need a break but that's really important is that we're we're not comparing ourselves to everybody else yeah, because it's a very slippery slope where we can get down and think, oh my goodness, well, all this, all these people are doing all these different things and I'm not able to be there. And and then it just gets you distracted from what your actual goal. It's like constantly bringing yourself back to center and then also recognizing that everybody's relationship is different. Everybody's family is different. And so doing what's best for your family and for the people involved in your family unit is where you should be putting your focus, right? Absolutely. I mean, your house and your four walls is just that. And yep. there's safety within your four walls and anything goes together as a family, but you can't compare um, what goes on in someone else's home. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit. You had mentioned stuff about stages, right? So you've got to watch your kids go through all the different stages. And we were talking about how when you're when you're, you have a really small baby, right? They definitely need all of your time and attention. But talk to me about what was the hardest stage for you, do you feel like, in your child's like kind of upbringing while working at the same time? Yeah, I would say it's easily the stage where my kids are at now, um, mm. starting in middle school and then into high school. Because the toughest part is is these harder life lessons. Yeah. Um, those conversations, I'll come home from work and I'll, you know, be stressed And you realize that you have to have a stressful or deep or, you know, even intimate conversation with your kids. Sure. And you're just like, oh my gosh, my mind is spinning about something else. And those are really stressful conversations. And you're trying to teach your kids lessons and so forth. So I would say, you know, middle school is definitely a crazy time in a a kid's life. Um, And then high school when they, you know, have a lot more stress for work, uh, for schoolwork, or even developing their friendships. Um, So I would say it's really the stage I'm in now, um, because Mm. you're having very, very different conversations than obviously when they're much younger um, in elementary school. And then yeah, course, I could I could see that for sure. I even think about myself in middle school and the conversation. You know, you think about yourself growing up, and you're like, oh, I gave my parents like a run for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, for sure. Sh- For sure. You know, you're, you're thinking back, how did I, how was I like when I was a child, but, um, you know, growing up now is very, very, very different. And even that social media aspects, that influence from what's happening, um, on the internet is another, you know, another aspect you have to deal with and be really, really careful with. Of, Of course, every parent should be diligent, diligent about what their kids are doing on the internet. Yeah. But yeah, it's a lot in their minds. And of course, you know, you don't want them to be disappointed. That's not reality. They're going to have disappointments. Sure. And as I said before, you know, they think you have all the answers and we don't. And mm-hmm. we don't. Surprise. 
So we're going to just help them navigate, but navigating, you know, some of those tougher life conversations, but also amazing joy when they accomplish something at school. Um, right. It's just, it's just harder than when they're, you know, really little. Yeah. I think the conversations just in general, I would imagine would be a little bit harder as they've gotten gotten older, right? Because you have you know, little kids and they <laughs> they probably were like, mom's is the coolest thing at work too. <laughs> Where like you have to deal with your own stresses during the day. And then obviously I think my, one of my mentors had said something like, they were small people and then they became bigger people with bigger problems. And so mommy now has to deal with also the bigger problems and work through those bigger problems with the kids. So exactly. And sometimes you have to pause and think about maybe how you yeah. don't want to respond to them. I mean, they may come out sure. with a loaded question to you and you're like, Oh my gosh, my phone's ringing. My email's going off. Yeah. I'm still thinking about this at work and you just have to pause and say, how, how do I want to have this conversation? Mm-hmm. And be present. Yeah. (laughs) It could throw your evening for a loop. (laughs) (laughs) So how do you find time for yourself in all of that? So, right. So you, you're working a full-time job, you're traveling. Um, how do you find time? And you know, you're managing a household basically where, you know, husband, kids, how do you find time for yourself? Do you find time for yourself? What's that look like? Yeah. I mean, just what you said, you, you don't find time for yourself that often. Um, and definitely not when they're younger. And that's why I said, you know, it's a different stress when they're older, when they're younger, it's just chaotic because you're dealing with, you know, you have to cater to their every need. They can't do it themselves. Um, so, you know, at the, at the early stages, I just, I didn't find time and I had to keep reminding myself, it's okay. Like I'll go back to the gym maybe when, you know, they're a year old or you sure. know, maybe you do find time for that, but, or maybe you want to, you know, have a girl's weekend. You're like, that's not realistic or a girl's mm-hmm. night out. But, you know, I, I knew that as a working mom, I wanted to be as present as I could. So I, I did put myself on the back burner and then you, you start to come out of your shell, your baby comes out of your shell, their shells and you're, mm-hmm. you're ready to give yourself some time time. But Mm -hmm. I also just try to ensure that I was as organized as I could so that I wasn't constantly distracted um, by the little things. So, and sometimes, you know, you need help, whether it's a friend or a family member, if you, you know, live nearby, you have to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, you know, you may need to get a babysitter that, or a housekeeper that you just need help. And you said, it's okay. You, that yeah. you can't do everything. Yeah. Um, and you just, was have it to be a hard realization or was that easy? It was like, Oh, please take it. Cause some people, I feel like that would be a hard realization to be like, I actually need help. Yeah. I mean, um, it, not really. I mean, when you're, when you're going through the motions, you're like, I know I can't do everything. So where yeah, yeah, do I yeah. want help right now? Mm-hmm. Um, and especially with traveling, I, I did have someone at home to take care of the kids and that's a luxury, but you, you know, if both of you are traveling, you have to realize that everything's not going to be in its place at home. Yep. And also, you know, non parents that are not working are always willing to help. And you really want to have that because yep. as they get older, like we were talking about before, they see sometimes what's happening after school and you don't. And you want that lifeline from another mom or dad that said, Hey, I saw your daughter after school. Here's what's going on. Mm-hmm. You want to hear that too. So yeah. um, that's really helpful also. That's cool. So what do you think is the most challenging thing about being a working mom? it's always questioning if you're doing it right. So, Mm. um, I really, you know, I try not to get distracted by, you know, the surprises in life and say, Mm -hmm. okay, you know, things didn't go as we planned. Let's kind of reconnect or change course. Mm -hmm. You know, I think after a number of years, maybe once they went to middle, you know, middle school or even, you know, late elementary school years, I did stop questioning myself as to, why I was working. I, I knew I was mm-hmm. on the right path. And then it's it's just a balancing act. So whatever you do to keep yourself balanced, whether it's, you know, organization or just mentally balanced, whether mm-hmm. you finally have time, as we talked about, to go to the gym or meditate or, you know, take that extra 15 minutes in the morning makes a big mm-hmm. difference. What's and, your thing? What's your thing for, for that balance for you specifically? Yeah, when you're like, okay, if I have that extra time, I'm going to do what? I love to entertain and cook. So oh, it, okay. it, it sounds like it would cause more time, but no. honestly, as, a, as a working mom, I love to see my kids interact with their friends. So 
my house is an open door and they're always coming over and whether I'm entertaining the kids or, you know, having families over and having a big family dinner. And I also find cooking to be my, my therapy. Sometimes I can get in the zone and also cook with my kids. So that's also another great, you know, experience that we have together, but that's my thing. I love that. I wish I was good at cooking. Maybe I could be. I feel like I'm I'm too impatient. That's been my problem. It's like, oh, I'm too impatient. This is going to take too long. Yada, yada, yada. And then I just like move on to the next thing, which is so bad because I do too think that it probably would be very relaxing for me. <laughs> and I also love to bring people around a table. So I need to like, we need to talk about that offline and you need to convince me that I need to start cooking. <laughs> for sure. Well, the best thing you can, you have a gift for gaps. You can entertain and, and bring food in. And that's the best thing to sit and relax around the table and talk. I love that. I love that. So the most challenging thing you would say is probably just worrying that you're doing it wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. So did you have any mentors yourself in your career to give you advice or help you navigate through all of this stuff? Or was it just kind of, you felt like you didn't really have a lot of people that were ahead of you doing what you're doing? No, for sure I did. And I think, um, you know, I've, my experience has been at one company for many years. So Mm -hmm. I, for me, it was more taking little nuggets along the way. Um, and depending on what stage I was in with my, um, my work and my career trajectory and what stage my kids were in. But for sure, I mean, the nice thing was because I've, I was at one place for so long. Um, I had so many memories there and people knew me and they saw me have kids. They saw me Mm -hmm. um, raise my kids. So that actually was very cool. Um, But absolutely, I think, um, you know, whether it was my direct boss at the time, a peer, cross-functional teams, I I liked to just check in with a lot of people um, versus maybe a a long-term mentor. And I really looked at it as, you know, using those building blocks in my career um, and learning along the way from other people. And then um, I try to give back to that. So I love talking with new moms now who are working and, and helping them out as well. But I definitely, like we said before, it's not comparing where you are with somebody else, but, Mm -hmm. um, you know, touching as many people as possible and and learning from people. Yeah. So what tips do you, or advice do you give those new moms that you kind of mentor? What would some of those things be? Sure. Um, as we said before, you know, if you're a brand new mom, give yourself some time to come back to life. Sometimes it takes as long as, um, a few months Mm -hmm. and recognize that, you know, your kids are going to change, um, obviously when they're little quite often. And then as they get older, there's, you know, major milestones in life, but just be patient with yourself, um, your partner and with your children. Um, you know, they see your stress level. Um, Mm -hmm. so you got to take a deep breath and come walk in the door, um, with a smile and and be ready for your game face at home too. But, um, it's okay to, to take that time and say, you know, how can I be present? And I think that's what's super important, um, especially today with technology is just be present because yeah. sometimes, you know, a lot of moms will say, my baby goes to bed in an hour after I get home. Okay. Use that hour as preciously as you can mm-hmm. um, and then get some rest yourself. So I would, um, you know, check in with yourself and check in with your kids and use um, your time wisely. And sometimes you realize that, you know what, there's some certain things that are just eating at your time that maybe aren't right for you right now. So also recognize when there's things that are just a waste of your time and and you're not going to do that right now. And I think when they were younger, um, as we, we were saying before, you compare yourself and it was very easy to say, well, that child is doing, you know, 10 different after school activities. Why can't mine? Um, and you can't, logistically get them from place to place. Mm -hmm. I really, really try not to over schedule my kids or myself because I think Mm -hmm. it just led to more stress and Mm -hmm. you were, you know, maybe you weren't getting the most out of the time. So I would not over schedule yourself and realize when you, when it's gotten a little too hectic. Yeah. That actually leads me to kind of another prompt off of that question. Have you ever reached a point where you had like a burnout moment in your career in life? do you feel like? Um, absolutely. I mean, whether it was just, you know, I can't wait till my next vacation. Um, how do I take, you know, instead of one week, two weeks, 
Um, mm-hmm. How do I, if I have to check in while I'm on vacation, which is absolutely realistic, can I do it, you know, earlier in the morning before the kids start, we start our day on vacation. So mm-hmm. for sure, but you know, I use those vacations as a re-energize. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, as we were saying before, what are the things that are taking up too much time that you're like, okay, there's just too much going on. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, if you abs- you you feel guilty, you want to get to that after school activity. Okay. Just, I always put everything on my calendar so I can say, okay, maybe I do need to get to work a half hour, an hour earlier today so that I can leave on time. And that helped me not feel as stressed, but sure. for sure, you, again, just check in with yourself and don't beat yourself up. And in the end, just be grateful because it is amazing to be able to do both and yeah. um, be grateful that, you know, you have had achieved so much and, and don't beat yourself up. Do you feel like nowadays, and if you don't feel comfortable answering this, you can totally say, but do you feel like nowadays, I've just heard this from some of my mom friends, um, that there's sometimes like this underlying current of like, I don't want to say moms who don't work outside the outside the home versus moms who work inside the home. Do you feel like there's some sometimes some weird like things between moms who do? <laughs> is there like, are there like different crews? Like, is, is that like a thing or is that just the movies? Um, it's a kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think non-working moms, you know, try to exclude working moms, but it's hard because you, you're just not as available. Um, sure. And there was a lot of evenings where I was like, I can't, I have to be home for my children. I, I'm not going to go out and have a girl's night because I know I have to be there. You know, it's, it's not a negative. It's just the reality. It is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. But you, you know, There's a lot of, um, like I said before, non-working moms that want to help out and not even help, but just keep an eye out for your child. Um, Sure. But, you know, I I have really long-term friendships with with both working and non-working moms. And the nice thing is my children have had these same friends and then it becomes a clear understanding. But like we said before, don't compare yourself um, yeah. because they're not looking down at you for yep. working um, at all. And yeah. it's most of the time your own guilt, but yeah, it is different. And, you know, you just, you know that you're doing the right thing for yourself and for your family. Yeah, totally. I totally agree. Cause my mom was a stay at home mom and I obviously I can't say what I, what I, will do once I have children. But my anticipation is that I probably will still work and and, um, be a working mom, quote unquote. Um, (laughs) So I I could see kind of, I see both both sides of that. And I think it's very interesting where I think it's become more commonplace for there to be more working mothers versus I think probably whenever I was born, it was probably a little bit less as less common, I'd say. Um, for sure. So for just, sure. it's just interesting. And my mom, you know, I, I love having my mom home. And I also have a lot of friends who it, I see both sides, right? So both sides of what women are talking about. So um, it was just yeah. an interesting, interesting thought, side thought that I had when you were talking about how mom was looking out kind of, you wanted moms to be looking out for your kids also that are not maybe working outside the home. So sure. um Kind of my last question for you, you had mentioned it a couple of times throughout this is like, why do you, you wanted it to be really clear to your kids, like why you work. So I would love if you could share with us, you know, why do you work? Why is that super important to you? And then if people want to get connected to you, how, how they can do that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, just talking what we were just talking about. I mean, you know, there was multiple times, but you know, I can remember clearly when my daughter was like, I want to work mom like you. Mm. Um, and she almost was proud of, of me and my husband of, about how we manage everything. And, and mm-hmm. they recognize that it's not easy, that there's a lot to manage. And, but I was super proud when they said, wow, we do it all. <laughs> and it's, and I say we, because I don't do it alone. You know, yeah. the kids have to give up, um, have sacrifices or, you know, there's certain sacrifices that we all make, you know, take because we're all, we're both working. So yep. that was, those are super proud moments that I've, I've showed that to my kids. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, now at the stage my kids are at, as I said, it's hard because you come home and you're having, you know, maybe some more stressful or deep conversations, Mm -hmm. but I knew that feeling good about myself and what I was achieving was really important to me. And I, Mm -hmm. you know, they're not young forever and you don't want to miss out on any of that. And I don't think I've missed out on that. I think that's the common thought is that you're just going to miss out and you don't, you just make 
some of those small, that time count. Um, and I knew that I could provide for them or I knew that, you know what, if I needed, you know, something to make them feel more secure, of course, safety and security was important when they were young. I, I, Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that that was, of course, never sacrificed. But I look, I, mean, I think, you know, 10, 15 years from now, I want to be in a career when my children are not home too. And um, sure. yeah. you, you don't want to forget that you're also, you know, that they do go off to college and do their, do their own thing. And I knew that I wanted a career to lean back on as well. And it, it also, like we were saying before, you feel like, you don't have an identity, identity, you're just someone's mom. Um, Mm. I felt like that identity of my career, my family, and my partner was really important to me. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing kind of all those words of wisdom. I know that there's a bunch of moms and potentially some dads out there that will find this actually really, really helpful and just kind of give the, whoo, we're not doing this wrong. Everyone kind of feels this way. And these are the ways that we can kind of potentially navigate through that. So thank you so Great much for sharing point. that. How can, how can people get connected to you? Yeah. The best place would to connect, connect with me on LinkedIn. Awesome. Um, it'll be Jennifer Han Fink and would love to hear from you guys. Yes. Yes. We'll put that information in the show notes. Jennifer, thank you again for joining us and um, friends get connected with her on LinkedIn. Thanks so much. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to Your Career Story Podcast. I would love, 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 love to get to meet you. And there are a couple of ways that we can connect in between episodes. First and foremost, you know I love my LinkedIn. Second is via Instagram. And third is over on my website. I actually have a special spot just for you full of fun, free resources. So all you have to do is go to www.jennaviviano.com backslash resources. Super simple for a bunch of freebies that will help you boost your career. Hope to see you next week.